Joseph Nicholson here, and welcome to Come In Soon Movie News with Nicholson. I'm your host, and on this show, we're going to be breaking down all of the day's movie news and kind of giving a little bit of background into what it means for the production in general, such as casting decisions, trailer announcements, director announcements, things like that. So, without any further ado, let's get started with today's hot topics. And the first topic we have to talk about is related to a story that we talked about last week involving the DC Cinematic Universe. So this actor has been rumored for a role in this movie for a very long time. Um, I think the first reports came out in either November or December of last year. So he's been heavily rumored for a long time to be involved with this project. But it's looking more and more likely that the actor Jason Momoa is actually going to be playing the role of Aquaman in Batman vs. Superman in a small role leading into his major role in Justice League, which will be hitting in Ju in uh, 2017. So, it, it's there's a lot of weight going against these accusations, mainly due to the fact that um, there have been a lot... Well, first off, Batman vs. Superman is filming right now, so there's a lot more insider knowledge to people who are actually working on the project who may let something slip by accident. One of them may be uh, a leaked casting call, or another one could be a, a report that someone said they saw somebody on set uh, you know, like a lot of these things can start to happen and it builds speculation as to whether or not these people are actually going to be involved. Like the, there was a rumor last week that Simon Pegg would actually be involved in some capacity with Star Wars Episode 7 because supposedly somebody saw him on set. Um, I don't know how likely that, I mean, if, if you think about it, he's worked on four J.J. Abrams projects to my knowledge right off the bat. Uh, Mission Impossible 3, which J.J. Abrams directed, uh, Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, which J.J. Abrams produced, and then of course this two, the two Star Trek movies, which J.J. Abrams both directed. So there's, there's a good link there to suggest that, but I don't know how likely it would be for someone like Simon Pegg to be involved, unless it's going to be a little teeny tiny cameo where he's someone in a Tatooine market, because that's where they said they saw him. They said they saw him um, in Abu Dhabi, and uh, I mean... To me, though, the only thing with that, it may come across as distracting. Um, I do really like it when we get those little surprise cameos, um, but I find that doing something like that may distract from the film. Uh, again, it all depends on how it's handled. For, a lot of people don't even know that there was a movie that came out about 10 years ago called Land of the Dead, and it was uh, it was a zombie film. It was a George A. Romero zombie film, like Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead and all that. It was filmed in Toronto. And Simon Pegg and Nick, for, or uh, no, Simon Pegg and Edgar Wright, I believe, both had roles in the movie. They were both zombies. There was a scene where they went to, uh, it was almost like a zombie wrestling ring type thing. And there were there was a section where you could take your photo with a zombie, and there were two zombies chained up. That was Simon Pegg, and I believe it was Edgar Wright. I don't think it was Nick Frost, but I could be mistaken on that. Um, so, I mean... That was very obscure. That was kind of their way to be involved, mainly due to the fact that they did Shaun of the Dead just previous to that. And they were just, they were very revered for that. So I don't know how likely that is, but with when dealing with something like this, like Batman versus Superman has had a lot of people linked to it. And with it now having the title Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice, we know that it is going to be a precursor to a Justice League movie. So they're using this in some capacity to introduce mainstream audience to these lesser known characters, or at least reinvigorating what people think. Because a lot of people think of Aquaman as being a real just kind of loser. Like he's not, uh, he, he's a guy who can talk to fish, he lives in the ocean, he wears green and, and orange. Um, a lot of people don't really have a lot of faith in this character as a real posable threat. Um, unless you've been introduced to the new 52 version of Aquaman. Um, I myself don't read a lot of comic books anymore, but I do follow up on a lot of the storylines, and I also have played the um, Injustice Gods Among Us video game, and they used a lot of the new 52 designs and architecture for the characters in that game. And I gotta tell you, the way they revamped Aquaman is insane. He he almost looks like he would come right out of Krypton. He like he looks like he's wearing that type of armor, and he's he's massive and he's buff and and he's he, he's you know scruffy and, and he just looks imposing he just looks like a badass and if they were to go that route especially casting someone like Jason Momoa it would really bring a lot more credence to the character it would bring a lot more viability to him existing in this universe and so I think this is the right step because Jason Momoa first off people are some people are unaware I talked about this on a previous episode but Jason Momoa was borderline offered the role of Drax the Destroyer in Guardians of the Galaxy, and he turned it down because he did not want 
Um, he didn't want to be pigeonholed into that type of character, the, the, the silent character who is just kind of like a bodyguard. He didn't, he didn't want that. And to have him come in, come into something like Batman versus Superman, I think, especially having a character like Aquaman, it's a bigger character in the universe. Drax is not going to be a major player in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, but Aquaman could be. He can get his own standalone films. I don't know how likely it is to get a Drax standalone film. He may be paired up with a couple of the characters because they are looking to branch out on Guardians of the Galaxy. But getting someone like Aquaman who could have a team up in a movie with somebody, you know, I mean, he's the he's the king of Atlantis. He controls the oceans, and and that's also the the most likely way that he's going to be introduced in Batman v Superman is the repercussions from the World Engine affecting the Indian Ocean. Because for those of you who saw Man of Steel, you know that the World Engine that they had it was on basically one of them was in Metropolis and the other one was in the Indian Ocean, and Superman had to fly to the Indian Ocean to stop that the World Engine. Um, and what it caused to the ocean would have had detrimental effects to the the species living in the ocean. And because he's the king of Atlantis and the, and the king of the oceans, he would have some questions for Kal-El. So, I mean, that's also one of the rumors how Wonder Woman and Batman are also going to be introduced is they're basically all coming after, uh, they're all coming after Superman. So we still don't know a whole lot about this film. Uh, we don't really know, I think, anything for sure outside of a couple of casts. Um... But the, I mean, there was a, a a leaked picture that came out last week of a fifth, I think it was fifteen feet or twenty foot sculpture being constructed of Superman that's being placed in Metropolis. So clearly, Batman v Superman is set sometime after uh, Man of Steel. Um, it, it's probably going to play a lot into the motivations behind what's going to happen after the Battle of Metropolis and the repercussions of that. Uh, a heavy rumor is that Lex Luthor and Bruce Wayne are both going to be teaming up to go up against Superman or to bring, to, to let the public be aware of this god uh, and, and what he is capable of and the fact that he should not be able to be on his own. He should be kept in containment of some kind. And that's probably where Batman is going to fight him. And then they're going to realize that they have a common enemy and that they are on the same side. And then they're going to go off and, and join the Justice League or create the Justice League from there. Um, but another leaked thing about this, that Dawn of Justice is starting to become almost like uh, an origin story for um, Justice League because it's, it's looking more and more likely that Martian Manhunter is actually going to be introduced in this film as well. Uh, and Darkseid is actually going to be the main protagonist in this film. So it's really intriguing um, with with the the advent of having someone like Darkseid as a Justice League villain. I think that he would be a perfect villain, to be completely honest. But the downside to having somebody like Darkseid is that he's pretty much the biggest villain that they have. It would be like in Avengers 1, them using Thanos. Uh, and then seeing where they could go from there. It, it's very difficult to try to top someone like Darkseid. And I don't know if having him be the villain in the first Justice League movie is going to be a smart decision because where do you go from there? You've kind of, uh, you've kind of peaked at that point. You don't really have something that's going to be better, um, at least in terms of scope and scale. Uh, but having someone like Martian Manhunter is intriguing because we haven't really been hearing a lot about that. That was just another role that Jason Momoa was rumored for in the past, but it's now looking very likely that he will be playing Aquaman. Um, but it, it's it's just really intriguing to see someone like Man, Martian Manhunter and Aquaman joining Cyborg, Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman in the same movie, and it's not a Justice League film, uh, leading into Darkseid. Now, Darkseid could also, if he is going to be a villain in Justice League, he could be a Thanos-type villain where he's in the background, he's the puppet master pulling the strings, and you have someone like Brainiac working for him, or you have someone like, uh, or, or even have Brainiac uh, and Doomsday be the two villains in in the the movie like that would be really cool again these are all more or less uh superman villains but still they usually are the more powerful villains which would cause a massive team like this to have to come together so i'm cautiously optimistic about this casting announcement just because i think he's a great choice but we've been burned so much in the past with news about this film that i'm i'm keeping my expectations low but if he does end up getting cast this is our step in the right direction they are starting to redeem themselves from casting gal gadot as wonder woman um so i mean it, it's going to be intriguing to see where they go from here but i am liking more and more what i hear about this film and we still have just under two years now before anything is going to be, or before we're going to see anything about this film. 
So it's going to, I, I'm, I'm really intrigued by this, but I'm really hoping we get some sort of official announcement at Comic-Con this year. So if we do, I'll definitely update you guys on here. And the next topic we have to talk about today is it looks as though Shane Black has secured the first two lead actors for his next movie, which is called The Nice Guys. Now, The Nice Guys is a movie set in 1970s Los Angeles. It's a film noir. Uh, and I'll, I'll read the, the setup. It's set in smoggy 1970s LA. Story follows a muscle for hire and a private eye who are brought together by the suicide of a fallen porn star. However, the dead girl's aunt is convinced that she saw her, or her niece alive and well after the highly publicized incident. Um, March needs money, March being the uh, muscle for hire. He takes the case and within days it blossoms into a far-reaching murder conspiracy bizarrely rooted in smog and the US auto industry. Um, at face value, this sounds like it could be kind of cool, but when you take into consideration Shane Black is going to be writing and directing it, and Shane Black has written such films, I'm going to go over a lot of the films that he's done. He wrote The Lethal Weapon Franchise. He wrote Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He wrote The Long Kiss Goodnight with Samuel L. Jackson. He wrote Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, which to me is one of the most underrated movies of all time. That movie is absolutely hysterical. And he also did Iron Man 3. You know, like, he, Iron Man 3 alone has allowed him to do much more projects that he's been wanting to do. So he's not only going to be writing this, but he's going to be directing it. And the two leads that he's secured for the film so far is Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. And one of the things that really intrigues me about this project is the fact that we're almost going to see a sequel of sorts to L.A. Confidential, which is one of my all-time favorite films. I mean, Russell Crowe, that, that launched Russell Crowe. Not, um, not a lot of people knew about Russell Crowe before that movie. And it really brought him up to a level where people would recognize him. They would say, like, holy crap, that's a talent right there. That's the guy who's going to win an Academy Award within the next five years. And you know what he did? He went and starred in Gladiator, and he won the Academy Award. So, I mean, that, that movie really set him up. Um, the fact that within the last several years, with the exception of uh, Noah, I personally haven't seen him in anything where I really thought he brought a lot to the role. Um, I thought he was great in Man of Steel as Jor-El, but I didn't really feel like he brought a lot to that role outside of just the gravitas of himself. I really didn't feel like he was playing a role. I felt like he was playing something that he had played previous. Um, but when you watch L.A. Confidential, that's a completely different Russell Crowe than most people are aware of. Um, any movie that he did prior to... Um, Gladiator, he did a couple of movies after Gladiator that were still really good, but around that time and before that is really when you see the great Russell Crowe as an actor. Nowadays, he doesn't really do as much acting as I'd like him to see. I find he just plays the same role kind of over and over and over again. Not to say that he's not a great talent, he still plays those roles really well, but he just hasn't diversified himself. I see this as him diversifying himself a lot, not only because it's going to be taking him back to roots that he's, he's familiar with, but he's going to be under... The, the the penmanship and direction of Shane Black. And I think that's really going to um, elevate him back into being... Um, he's, he hasn't lost star. Like it, It's really hard for me to get across the point that I'm trying to make. Um, he's kind of fallen flat, even though he's still an A-lister. If Russell Crowe is attached to something, like, holy crap, this must be a good movie. But I think this is going to take it back to where he's he's not looking like he is kind of bored in the role. Um, I think he's really going to be able to take the full reins of this and, and really run with it. Ryan Gosling. Ryan Gosling's a phenomenal actor, do not get me wrong. Um, I find that he has chosen the weirdest career path that I think out of any actor out there. Um, he's almost been offered high profile gigs and turned them down. Like he just doesn't want to do them and to me I don't understand that because he is someone who wants to do these really risky projects but having a successful movie under your belt, like a really successful mainstream film, really helps with that. If you say, hey, listen, like I have this, I'm, I am bankable, people will come and see me. If you do one or two major hits and then go back to your indie roots, then people will follow you. As long as you keep popping up every few years in a major release, then they will follow you. But outside of that, I mean, I think he's going to fit in perfectly here. I do find that he fell really flat in Gangster Squad, well, Gangster Squad in, in general just fell flat, uh, but his character was not written very well. He played him so, like, overly smooth, unrealistically smooth. Um, like, no one would be like that in real life at all, at all. I'm sorry, but it was just, it was so fake. Um, I just, I, I couldn't get behind his role in that, but I mean, watching movies like Drive or The Place Beyond the Pines, 
Like he is such a diversified actor that putting him in a project like this, I think could be, I think could be really good for his career. Not only that, I think it's going to be entertaining as all hell. Having someone like Shane Black write a movie, he has never written a movie that's not entertaining. And also he is the, the maestro of pairing up people who you would not normally think should be paired up like Russell Crowe and Ryan Gosling. So I, this movie has a lot going for it. I am intrigued at this point. The storyline sounds kind of eh, but with someone like Shane Black's credentials writing this and directing it, I think it has, it, there's a lot more to what we're actually being told right here. So if this actually ends up going through, I'm very excited for this film. I love the pairing of the actors. I love the director and, and the, the direction that they look to be going. Um, I would have liked to have seen Shane Black's version of Doc Savage, which he's been working on for a long time, but it looks like they're pushing that off for a little bit. Um, but yeah, I mean, th this movie's got a really cool, interesting feel to it. So I I'm looking forward to it. When we get more information about it, I will definitely update you guys on here. And the last story we have to talk about today on Hot Topics is actually kind of, it it's interesting. Um, Jackie Chan's next film. A lot of people are like, oh, Jackie Chan, ugh. It's like, okay, you got to give the guys due. He changed cinema in the 90s. I mean, he brought forth, he, he was the new Bruce Lee of sorts. Like, he he was the martial artist who brought forth the martial arts film back into modern American, or I should say North American cinema. So, he's currently, he's been working a lot on Chinese films. He doesn't do a lot of North American films anymore. He does a lot of Chinese films. And the latest one he's working on is a historical action epic set in ancient China called Dragon Blade. And this one is, it's starting to get even more and more intriguing to me because they just added on a couple of really cool casting features. Uh, the first one is John Cusack. Like John Cusack being, excuse me, John Cusack being added to anything is really intriguing because he's, he's a great actor. Yes, he's phoned it in from time to time, especially more recently. But John Cusack's been in the business since the 80s. I mean, the dude knows how to... He knows how to act. He knows how to play a character. Um, and so Cusack will be playing a character by the name of Lucius, who is a Roman general who's leading his troops into China. Um, the other casting announcement is Adrian Brody. Adrian Brody, like, to me, this is like, what? Really? Adrian Brody? I, I, like, I thought he was a great actor to begin with. When I heard that he was announced as the main star of Predators I was like are you kidding me the guy's like 120 pounds soaking wet he's a toothpick the dude got jacked for that movie he is a dedicated method actor he is willing to transform himself for any role and supposedly Adrian Brody will be playing Tiberius who will be the villain of the film who after killing uh, the Roman consul Crassus he's hunting Lucius and his army with another army of over a hundred thousand soldiers so like a, a massive battle is going to ensue in this film and Jackie Chan will play uh, Wow on and uh, he is a commander of the protectorate of the Western regions who teams up with Lucius who's played by John Cusack to defend China's border this sounds epic as all hell um, it's it, it's got a 65 million dollar budget which in terms of a production out of China is one of the most if not the most expensive production that they've ever put out um, the, for some reason, maybe it's just because a lot of the in-house stuff would happen in terms of special effects, but I don't understand how they're able to do a film like for $65 million, just un unless the upfront cost of the actors is not as much. That's the only way I can really see the budget being that low. Um, this sounds just cool. I mean, it's something so different and unique than what we're used to. It, it's it's a, an ancient epic, yes, and, and the first thing that comes to mind with this there's two of them. One is 47 Ronin, which fell flat. Some people did enjoy it, but they didn't find that it was a very good film. Um, it just it had some cool moments. The other one that I'm getting a very bad vibe about, with just, just the sound. Again, we haven't seen anything. It's It just started shooting about a week or two ago, so we don't really have even a lot of footage to to talk about because they just haven't... Excuse me. They just haven't released any of it, but I'm hoping it, it ends up being as epic as it sounds and not as cheesy as a movie like Pompeii. Because this has a very Pompeii feel to it, and I'm that kind of makes me nervous. So I'm, I'm a little worried about that, but um, as it stands right now, I love the premise. I love the casting announcements that are in this film. Um, the guy who's directing it also directed um, Black Mask, which was a, a film 
I believe it was with Jet Li over 10, 15 years ago that came out. They get, that was a very hardcore martial arts film. Didn't really have a lot in terms of story, um, but it, it was just very, very well choreographed fight sequences, which is almost par for the course when it comes to these types of movies. So it'll be intriguing to see what direction they actually go with with this film. But as it stands right now, this is all we know about it. It's called Dragon Blade. Jackie Chan is supposedly going to be the main character of the movie. And uh, John Cusack and Adrian Brody will be kind of mirroring him as of sorts. Like Cusack will play his partner uh, later on in the film. They, they will team up and they will go up against Adrian Brody. It's going to be intriguing to see both Cusack and Brody play Roman generals. Uh, and seeing them pair off one another. I have a feeling we're going to get hammy acting up the wazoo, especially from, from Cusack, um, which makes me think of Kiefer Sutherland's role in, in Pompeii, which that was just... Ugh. Um, but as it stands right now, I'm, I'm intrigued by this project. I think it has a lot of promise, and it could go either way, but as it stands right now, I'm, I'm into it because I want to see another Jackie Chan movie. I, I want to see him back on the big screen again because I do feel that, that he still has a couple of films left in him. All right, well, that'll do it for Hot Topics. We're now going to move on to Rapid Fire. So the first segment of Rapid Fire is actually one that surprised me a little bit. Um, I can almost picture what was actually happening when this when this went down, but Harrison Ford, uh, while filming Star Wars Episode Seven in London, actually broke his ankle. Uh, he was filming a sequence supposedly involving the Millennium Falcon and its door, um, where he, and it broke. To me, that says that, you know, the, either they were walking up to it and it wasn't working and he kicked it, or something had to do with the Millennium Falcon not working because it's a hunk of junk. <laughs> and um, and so he kicked it and it broke his ankle. Well, they originally did say that they were going to be continuing on with filming. Um, to me, I don't know how likely that is, at least to do the full amount of time that he's supposedly going to be out. Because it says he's going to be out for about eight weeks now. So it's two full months. Um, but they said that filming will continue for that duration. The thing that gets me is Han Solo is rumored to have a very large role in this film, if not the main role. So with him being pretty much the, the main focal point of the movie and still being able to film, unless they're just going to reshape how they were going to have their filming schedule, I, I don't know how they're going to be able to do it unless it just turns out that, that Han Solo was not as key to the storyline as we originally thought. So we don't know a whole lot about this film as of yet. We don't know really officially anything outside of the cast. Um, the fact that it is filming and that J.J. Abrams is directing it and it's coming out in December of next year. That's all we know about it. Um, everything else, well, and Millennium Falcon's in it. Tatooine will be involved in the film. So there's little bits that we know. But in terms of what's actually going to happen in the film, we don't know anything. So as it stands right now, I just don't see how they could continue filming for the eight weeks unless they reshift re how the, the filming schedule was going to be. And if they do that, then absolutely it'll, it will work. But if Han Solo is rumored to have the key role in the film, it's going to be difficult for them to be able to film for eight weeks without him being there, unless some of his sequences are going to be him sitting down. If if he's sitting down, then they could probably get him on set. They could help him around, get him into get him into position. If he's on the, the bridge of the Millennium Falcon, then yeah, they can film all those sequences with, with him like this. Um, but as it stands right now, this is all we know about the project uh, in terms of this breaking news. But if we get more information, I'll definitely update you guys on here. And the last bit of news we have to talk about in rapid fire um, will actually contain a spoiler. So I'm going to inform you about that right now. Um, if you don't want to know about any spoilers whatsoever, it, even if I say what it has to do with, you're going to know what I'm talking about. So I won't even say it. So if you don't want to hear about spoilers about anything, you guys can go ahead and stop watching because this is going to be the final uh, the final segment of the show. But if not, continue on reading. All right. Okay. So Frank Grillo was just doing an interview for his new movie called The Purge Anarchy. And in that interview, he was asked a couple of key questions. The first, uh, about a couple of weeks ago, maybe a month ago now, his name was linked to the remake of the Indonesian film The Raid, which is going to be directed by Patrick Hughes, who's currently doing Expendables 3. So his name came up with that, but we didn't hear anything about that after the fact. Well, it turns out that he's actually fully signed on to the film. If it does happen, he did say that if it moves forward, I'm attached to it. So I think he may be talking about the fact that it was delayed. The filming was supposed to start in September. Now it's being pushed back to start in January. So, um, from from what Frank Grillo said was that Patrick Hughes actually was taking another stab at the script, and that's one of the main reasons why 
they were actually delaying the film. Whether or not that's legitimate is another story. I'm, I'm not even going to get into that because I could talk for another 10 minutes on that. But um, Also, it, this is where the spoiler comes into play. So again, if you don't want to know anything, th this has nothing to do with the raid, but it will have something to do with Frank Grillo. So if you don't want to know anything about any of the movies that he's been in the past or or anything like that, you can you can go ahead and stop watching. But if you want to continue on, I'll give you the information. So he was also asked about what's the status of his character Brock Rumlow, also known as Crossbones in Captain America series, and whether or not he will be coming up in Captain America 3. For those of you who, who saw Captain America Winter Soldier, you know that um, after the... Um, oh, Trapscallion, Texcallion, I can't remember the name of the actual building, but um, when the building was destroyed by the helicarriers at the end, um, Brock Rumlow was inside that building, but then they found his body in the rubble and he was still alive. He was horribly burned and, and, and beaten, um, but he was still alive. And so they asked him about whether or not he's going to be showing up in Captain America 3. And he did say that as it stands right now, as far as he knows, he is going to be in Captain America 3. Whether or not it's a major role, if he's actually going to have his full costume, which he has said that he wants, he wants him to have a costume. Um, but he said that as it stands right now, it's very likely that we're going to see Brock Rumlow and Crossbones appear in Captain America 3. So that was the spoiler of it, because for those of you who haven't seen Captain America 2, um, you would have noticed that as it goes through that he's a bad guy, and oh, wait, it looks like he dies. Oh, wait, no, no, at the end... If you're thinking that, okay, he dies, but I know that he's coming back for the third, so I don't get it. Oh, then he pops up. So you don't have to worry about that. Um, it looks like he is going to be appearing in Captain America 3. I'm more intrigued by him being involved in the raid. I think that he's more than likely he's going to be the, the henchman for the villain. I can see him playing that role. Um, I, I personally hope that he's not the, actually, you know what, it, after I see the Purge Anarchy, it's going to probably change my mind as to whether or not I want to see him as the good guy, as the main character. Um, but as it stands right now, I would, I would like to see him as the henchman because that guy, if anyone's seen the raid, the raid redemption, not the raid Burnthal, the raid redemption, that guy was a psychopath and Frank Grillo can play a psychopath. So that's my hope for that project, but as it stands right now, we don't know who he's going to be playing. He just confirmed that he is in the movie when it does end up starting to shoot, which should be in January. So as it stands right now, this is all we know about these projects, but when we get more information, I'll definitely update you guys on here. All right, well, that'll about do it for us here on Coming Soon Movie News with Nicholson. Thank you so much for watching. You guys have been a great audience. Don't forget to click subscribe there in the bottom corner. You can get updates whenever we post a new video. You can also follow me on Twitter at Nicholson, N-I-K-L-S-U-N, for all of your movie updates. And you can find us at movienewswithnicholson.ca, where you can go to the contact, se contact section and submit any sort of questions or topics or comments that you'd like to have addressed on the show, and we will answer them on every Friday episode. So without any further ado, this has been Nicholson. Thank you guys so much for watching, and you enjoy the rest of your day. Take care.